AKC Live is all new. This week we follow the Beagle Brigade who work at JFK. We find out what it takes to create one new pet product and we will show you a preview of a new animated film, Sergeant Stubby. All this and more now on AKC TV. I'm Sam Ryan and this is AKC Live, AKC's live show bringing you the latest dog news and entertainment from the American Kennel Club. Last month, Hollywood rolled out the red carpet for our canine friends as over 1,200 dogs competed at the Kennel Club, a Beverly Hills dog show on March 3rd. The show aired on Sunday, April 1st on the USA Network. And if you missed it, tune in for the re-air Sunday, April 8th, 1 p.m. Eastern, NBC. The show is hosted by David Fry and John O'Hurley. And the best in show winner was the Wire Fox Terrier named King. King is six years old, handled by Gabriel Rangel. He is the number one Wire Fox Terrier and the number five Terrier in the country. Congratulations to King and the Kennel Club of Beverly Hills, where every dog is a star. And speaking of dog stars, there's a new movie coming out next week called Sergeant Stubby, an American Hero, which is a true story about a homeless dog who eventually becomes a hero during World War One. Take a look. Sam, Sam, Sam. No. No? That word didn't exist in this dog's dictionary. He didn't understand the word. Nothing would get in his way. No, 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 no. Hey, hey, listen, listen, stay. No. Stay. Stay. Good. That's enough, shut up. On your feet, then let's go! He was on a mission. Once on the team, he did everything like his soldier buddies, and soon he became one of them. All right, Stubbs. Here we go. Here. Oh. All it took was friendship and love to turn a little homeless dog into an unlikely hero. Joining me right now is the writer, director, and executive producer of the film, Richard Lanny. Now, this film, based on a true story, how did you learn of this story, Richard? I was uh, researching a World War I series for PBS, and I came across the story of Stubby, and I thought, what a wonderful, inspiring story. I need to tell this in family animation. So how close to, is the film to the actual, to the real story? Um, we've tried wherever possible to be as close to the story as we can. Obviously, it is a movie, and there are certain gaps that we didn't. Nobody followed Stubby around every day to see what he was doing, so we had to, you know, build it out and dramatize it. But we've we've used a lot of known events in the movie. You said when you saw documentaries and saw the footage and heard about it, you wanted to do this film. Why did you want to create it? Why did you feel that this was compelling? I felt that Stubby was a canine version of the American dream. I felt that here was a dog who was homeless, who was a stowaway going to France, who came back leading the parade. You know, this is a this is the American dream. I felt he was an inspiration and will be an inspiration to to people generally and young people particularly, because his story is inspirational. Aside from being America's most decorated dog and the first canine to be promoted to the rank of sergeant in the US Army history, it's also about that strong bond between Stubby, the dog, and a young soldier. What did you learn about that relationship? Well, it, you know, he's a, it was just, it, it really reinforces this thing about man's best friend, you know. These were two really close buddies, you know, Robert Conroy and this little dog were really close buddies. They kept one another safe, they kept one another alive. And it's just this wonderful, touching story that's so full of heart. And it certainly reinforces the, you know, the adage, man's best friend. Logan Lerman, Elone Bonacarter, Gerard de Bardot. Was it hard to get them on board? No. It wasn't hard to get anybody on this project. This, I've never had a project in my life. I had so much goodwill. Everybody wanted to be part of it. And Patrick Doyle, who wrote the score, has written this masterful score. Uh, said, I have to do this. And he's in the top 10 composers in the world. I have to do this. This is a gift for me. Uh, and he's written this amazing, he takes us on this wonderful roller coaster of emotion with his music. And it's, it's incredible. And so, no, it's been wonderful. It's been like pushing in an open door. 
so close to debuting in the theaters, but what has been some of the early feedback you've received? Wonderful feedback from audiences. We had our, our premiere in LA last week and it was really good. To, we had 400 children from the variety uh, Los Angeles Boys and Girls Clubs and the feedback was tremendous. Um, we're waiting for our reviewers now. It's nail biting times. You know, we've got people like the New York Times and Washington Post. But the audience feedback so far has been really encouraging. You know, you talked about the bond, the strong bond between the young soldier and Stubby and how dog is man's best friend. Do you have a dog? I do. I have a little dog called Chips. He's now 14 years old. He's an Irish Jack Russell. He's been my constant companion for the last 14 years. He's actually at home in France now because he doesn't travel. He's now 14 years old now. But he's been an amazing, um, amazing companion to me. And I actually used many things I saw the dog, my dog, do. I thought I need to write about this in the script. So, for example, there's a scene where Conroy is leaving. And uh, Stubby gets into his kit bag. Well, every time I'm packing to leave, this little dog gets into my suitcase. So to go, you're not going anywhere without me. You know, it's sort of that kind of thing. So it was interesting to study my own dog when I was writing the screenplay. And for more on Sergeant Stubby's story and the movie, let's hear from some of the folks involved in the making of the movie. It really is probably the first or one of the only films I can think of, uh, animated family films that takes place during uh, war, and particularly World War I. The fact that it's going to be animated will probably bring it to an audience, i.e. young children, that wouldn't normally know about the story. Having said that, what's great as an adult and a mother of younger children, it appeals to, to both generations. The thing that I, I thought was really cool about this project is that it's the first time uh, in my career, and I think Mark's career as well, where we get to animate and work on a project based on real events. And that, to me, is one of the coolest things about this project. We are one of, if not the first major animated film to be based on a true story. It's the story of a man and a dog in the middle of a conflict who keep each other safe and keep each other alive. You did a great work to, to speak about that time. This is very important time. I have a big link with the First World War. My great grandfather was the prime minister when the First World War started and he lost his son, Raymond after whom, in fact, my father was named, and after whom my son is named. You know, it's, it's a tough subject matter to get, especially in a family film, but um, this isn't a movie about the horrors of war as much as it's about the bond between a dog and, and a soldier. Through the art of animation, we're able to bring that period of history alive and bring these stories back into the popular consciousness for audiences of all ages. We're able to tell a dog's eye view of American history. We all love our dogs and this combination of the story of a dog and the relationship with a man and military history, I felt it was really quite remarkable. This film is a showcase for an extraordinary being who happened to have four legs. Richard, thank you so much. Thank you for sharing the story with us. And hey, if you are looking for a good family fun, Sergeant Stubby opens nationwide April 13th. Stubby isn't the only hardworking dog we're featuring today. Across the country, our four-legged friends are working in airports. Beagles and their strong sense of smell assist in U.S. Border Patrol. Let's find out more about the Beagle Brigade. When you think U.S. Border Patrol, you're probably thinking of this. Don't miss your opportunity to become a critical part of protecting America 24 seven. But for most people entering the country, this is the fearsome face right, of the U.S. border. Come on, biscuit. Biscotti. Biscotti, that's my nickname for him, is uh, Biscotti. Yeah, the Italian version of biscuit. Not only is Biscuit adorable, he's also a key member of the U.S. Customs and Border Protection as part of the Beagle Brigade. The Beagle Brigade is a group of canines that work all over the United States and all of the international airports. Their job is to find um, agricultural contraband that could bring insects or diseases into our country that we don't have here. In the international airport, the Beagles are working in each of the terminals. When the passengers come to the carousel to pick up their bags, that's when they'll meet one of our canines, one of our Beagles. Generally, the passengers are very excited when they see our Beagle partner. And 
and mm -hmm. we'll go around and the Beagle will smell those suitcases looking for the uh, particular odors that we're interested in. If the Beagle finds something that he knows that we're interested in, he'll sit. That's our final response, the Beagle sits. If it is something that we're interested in, the Beagle will get his treat, his food reward. There's a good reason the border uses beagles. We chose the beagles because of their natural desire for food. They love everything about food, so that makes that part pretty easy. Their cuteness plays an important role as well. They love love, they're not aggressive, they love being around people, and their smaller size makes them easier to work in this particular environment. But at the center of the job is their sense of smell. The scientists say that their nose is a thousand times stronger than ours. I mean, you're talking a grate in a Samsonite suitcase, in a, what we call a hard side, one grate. They're perfectly matched for what, we, what we're asking them to do. All of our beagles are adopted. They all come from various sources, uh, primarily uh, local pounds. He's a rescue, it was a hunting dog that they found on the side of the road in northern Georgia and they, they rescue him from a kill shelter. He'll be given what we call a temperament test, which is basically just a, a quick test to see if they're gonna be okay in this, this environment. If they don't pass that test, they still win because then we'll readopt them out. At approximately eight years old, all of our beagles will either reach retirement on their own or will retire. The beagles at that point will go home with their handler and spend the rest of their uh, life on the couch, hanging out. Being a canine officer has is, is got to be the best job in the whole world. You have a partner that's totally dedicated and loves you and looks out for you, makes you look good. Letting that pup surprise you each time is just amazing. You can read more about the Beagle Brigade and other Beagle stories in the March-April issue of AKC's Family Dog Magazine. This issue is also the tech issue, and it features gadgets and other cool stories. One of the products featured is the Petrix Smart Pet Bed. Now, this product was featured at this year's Consumer Electronics Show, also known as CES, where next-generation innovations are introduced to the marketplace. And here to talk about the Smart Bed is Edward Hall, CEO of Petrix. Welcome, Edward. Thank you for joining us. So tell us a little bit about the Smart Bed and what does it do? Hi, thank you for having me. Um, yeah, so we unveiled the world's first Smart Pet Bed. It tracks your pet's weight and does heating and cooling. So that way you can actually, um, through the, the weight metrics, we can actually kind of spot some of the deviations in your pet's weight, which vets really like to see because um, you know, pets don't typically get their weight measured uh, very frequently, uh, usually once or twice a year but being able to have more consistent and uh, frequent measurements really helps provide some more insights in that area. And then the heating and cooling provides optimal comfort as well as helping pets stay in their safety zones. Um, a big part of that too, you know, a lot of pet owners, they don't get pets uh, that are necessarily conducive uh, to those environments. And uh, so for us, we wanna make sure that, you know, if you have a Husky in Florida, you know, that you can have this bed to make sure that they stay cool um, similarly, you, you know, you see pets laying on the tile floors in your kitchen in the way when you're trying to cook, and they're really trying to be, get cool and uh, reduce their body temperature. So we really wanted to create an innovative product that not only was comfortable for the pet, but also provided additional health benefits, safety, and early detection and tracking. And we've also included an activity tracker with the bed, and that tracks your pet's um, activity levels and caloric burn rate. And it also acts as an identification device for your pet too. So if you have more than one pet, it's okay. You don't have to buy more than one bed. They can actually all use the bed and we'll be able to track each, each individual weight as well as their um, you know, understanding what temperatures they like when they're using it. You know, detailed, innovative, heating, cooling, tracking the weight. What inspired you to create this? So for me, um, it, it was the issue of you know, being able to have an automated way that we could easily track our pet's health, but not intervene with our busy schedules. And uh, you know, as much as we love our pets and we always wanna be the best we, uh, you know, caregivers for them, sometimes it's just really difficult to spot uh, a lot of those issues or provide them with their optimal uh, comfort needs. And so by being able to automate this, which we see in a lot in technology nowadays, and that's where the trends are, is, is how can we be more efficient in our day-to-day -day lives and improve in areas such as pet caregiving, but um, you know, really being able to assist us um, 
in, in that day-to-day -day need, you know. Uh, so I, I really wanted to identify these areas. And so we work very closely with veterinarians, vet nutritionists, um, pet owners. Uh, we're all pet owners ourselves. And, and really trying to find these ideal solutions in, in what becomes a big ecosystem too. So all the data that we collect here also feeds into the mobile application where we actually help pet owners find their ideal foods and treats uh, as well for their pet based on their physical characteristics, their breed, life stage, um, their own social preferences too, if you needed organic, non-GMO. Uh, so we really wanted to take a deep dive into this and give you uh, this companion application and the way I like to put it, you know, dog's man's best friend, we want to be pet, or pet owner's best friend. And so that's really what we try to build is this, this true ecosystem that we can scale up in the future to um, add in other devices as well to track other pet metrics. And that's where the name comes from, Petrix. Uh, mm -hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> Edward Hall, congratulations to you and thank you for your time. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Today's fun fact, did you know that puppies are born with their eyes shut and ear canals closed? It takes anywhere from nine days to two weeks after birth for these two senses to develop. And time now for the AKC's Nibbles and Bits. Today we learn how to make Honey Mutts, a sweet honey and oat confection for your pup from the Organic Dog Biscuit Cookbook. Thanks for watching AKC Live. Go to AKC TV for documentaries, heroic dog stories, and puppies. It's good dog TV. We'll be back in two weeks. I'm Sam Ryan.